LeBron James has had a very long and successful career with many different teams. From rookie year to current day, we have seen LeBron James transform and improve many different parts of his games. We have seen his career skyrocket with some teams and plummet with others. If I were to ask you which version of LeBron James is the best, which one would you say? Each different version of LeBron has had strengths and weaknesses that would give it a solid argument as the best. To even have the, this discussion is a testimony to LeBron's greatness. It is truly remarkable how LeBron James has sustained 17 seasons of all-star and higher production. During this video, we are going to take a deep look at himself on the four different teams and compare them to each other to see which version is the best. Right now, I want you to comment which version you think is the best and why. You are watching an Eddie Buckets production. First, we are going to talk about each version of LeBron and why he's so great. We're going to go in chronological order, starting with his first run in Cleveland from 2003 to 2010. This was LeBron James' very first team. He averaged 27.8 points per game, 7 assists per game, 7 rebounds per game, 1.7 steals per game, and 0.9 blocks per game. This young version of LeBron relied heavily on his athleticism while he played. He was really just an athletic, highlight producing machine that could do almost anything on the floor. His game at the time was very unpolished and lacked many of the skills and traits that he possessed later in his career. During this era of LeBron, we also saw his unforgettable 07 and 08 finals where he lost to the more experienced and disciplined Spurs in four games. At this time, this was incredible for a player his age and for the lack of help he had. Unfortunately, LeBron lacked the leadership skills necessary to win. During the later years of this team, we saw him develop more skills of his game and saw him take a step closer to the peak LeBron we all know and love. The second team LeBron played for was the Miami Heat from 2010 to 2014. He averaged 26.9 points per game, 6.7 assists per game, 7.6 rebounds per game, 1.7 steals per game, and 0.7 blocks per game. I would argue that this was LeBron's peak of his career. This is where LeBron had the most to prove to the world playing for a stacked Miami team. LeBron was tired of not winning and he was very hungry for a championship, constantly playing with a chip on his shoulder. He was one of the most physically dominant players on the floor at all times. His athleticism was still out of this world. He really started to develop his skill set as a basketball player and he was at his defensive peak at this point. This is where LeBron really first learned about leading a team to victory. This was probably the most successful time of his career. During this time, Miami LeBron achieved two championships, two finals MVPs, two MVPs, and so many more awards. The next LeBron was his second run in Cleveland from 2014 to 2018. He averaged 26.1 points per game, 8 assists per game, 7.7 .7 rebounds per game, 1.4 steals per game, and 0.7 blocks per game. I would say that this LeBron was the most well-rounded version of himself. He was still a solid defender, had good athleticism, and was becoming a very skilled player as well. We saw LeBron take big steps into improving his shooting and his playmaking. One of the most important things that he learned from this team was how to be the number one man on a team and lead them to success. For example, the notorious 3-1 comeback from the Warriors in 2016 really proved that he could be the alpha on the team and overcome adversity when no one else believed in him. Another example was in 2018 when LeBron had to drag a team full of scrubs to the finals where their best player was either an old Kevin Love or J.R. Smith. Currently the last team LeBron has played for, the Los Angeles Lakers from 2018 to 2020. In LA, he's averaging 26.3 points per game, 7.9 rebounds per game, 8.6 assists per game, 1.6 steals per game, and 0.8 blocks per game. LeBron at this point in his career is obviously a shell of his former self. We've seen his athleticism decrease from his prime years in the league. LeBron being an all-time great, he knew this would happen at some point. And as a result, we've seen LeBron really develop his post game and his jump shot. Skills that are necessary for when his athleticism can't single-handedly dominate the game. We've also seen his basketball IQ and playmaking ability soar to the highest point in his career. For example, LeBron James led the league in assists in 2019 and 2020, averaging 10.2 assists per game. 
passing abilities are very necessary for LeBron at this point, where he's not able to do everything and needs help from his teammates. One of the biggest things that stands out about his game is his leadership qualities and his playoff experience. Without either of these assets, his 19-20 and 20 championship may not have been possible. Those and many other developed skills will help Bronda continue to see success in the NBA when his athleticism isn't A1 anymore. To give you guys a better visual comparison, I decided to make a few charts that show many of the successes that LeBron has had throughout his career. The first chart we have is showing LeBron's scoring throughout his years. We can see that his scoring surprisingly peaked in the earlier years of his career during his first stint in Cleveland. I think this is because LeBron has had little help on those teams and he was in his athletic prime at that point. His scoring, however, has remained at an elite level for all 19 years of his career, something that only all-time great players are capable of. Now, let's add a few stats to this chart, shall we? The next chart is composed of the five major stats in basketball, points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. The first thing that pops up to me is how consistent these numbers are from year one to current. This is the type of longevity that is truly remarkable and shouldn't be taken for granted. Something else I've noticed. As LeBron's points per game tend to go down, he makes up for it in other areas, especially rebounds and assists. This shows how well-rounded of a player LeBron is and how uh, developed his game has became over time in his career. Moving on, the next chart we have accounts for LeBron's accolades. The accolades that will be used in this chart are championships, MVPs, finals MVPs, all-star appearances, all-NBA first teams, defensive player of the years, rookie of the year, scoring titles, and assist titles. One of the first observations we can see is that LeBron won most of his accolades during his first run in Cleveland. Even though this wasn't his best years for basketball, I can contribute these results to a couple of reasons why. First off, he spent more of his time with the first stint Cavs than any other team, giving him more time to get these awards. He also didn't have voter fatigue that could have slowed down his progress. At this time, LeBron was a young, exciting, highly producing athletic freak. I was must basketball, so people were more likely to give him awards. And finally, he had the least amount of help on those Cavs teams, forcing him to produce more for his teams to win. We can also see that Miami Brown was second, second stint Cavs Brown was third, and Lakers Brown was last. And finally, the last chart I made was to track his playoff success. This is how the graph works. Zero points means you missed the playoffs. One point means you lost in the first round. Two points means you lost in the second round. Three points means you lost in the conference finals. Four means you lost in the finals. And five means you won the finals. LeBron James was most successful in the playoffs with Miami and a close second with the second stint Cavs. This, this graph does a really good job at showing LeBron's longevity. LeBron at any age has always had the natural ability to play well in the clutch, making the finals 55% of the time and sustaining that especially in his prime. Now that we've put all of the necessary information into context, let's discuss where they rank. At fourth best version, we have the first stint Cavs LeBron. By no means is this LeBron actually bad. All four of these periods of LeBron's are superstar level players. While this version of LeBron was certainly putting up all the necessary numbers, he was still young and developing important parts of his game. He was still improving his basketball skills and was still learning the mental aspect of how to lead a team and win at this level which is why I couldn't rank him any higher than he is. Although he has had many of the individual awards, he still lacks a championship, a very important award that all other versions were able to achieve. Overall, this LeBron is still great, just young and developing. At number 3, I have Lakers LeBron. This LeBron is pretty much a shell of his former self. Even though his athleticism has started to fade over the years, he has made up for it in many different areas. He tremendously improved his jump shot, passing ability, and post moves, but more importantly, he has improved much of the mental side of the game. He has really improved his basketball IQ, improved his leadership skills, and has gained valuable experience that helps him, which is probably the most important reason of why this version got placed third and not fourth. 
but I couldn't place this version above the next two because the next two are pretty much prime brawn and have a lot less weaknesses than this one. At a close second, I have second stint Cavs LeBron. This is pretty much prime or near prime LeBron James. I think he has little to even no weaknesses at this point. His athleticism is still great and he has really taken his basketball skills to the next level here. He has also improved his mental game a ton, showing better leadership and IQ than before. Another reason why this LeBron ranked so high was the 3-1 comeback in 2016. We really never see a player achieve this and go through so much adversity on the way there like LeBron did. I feel like I can't give this LeBron the number one spot because he doesn't have the achievements he Bron does, but more importantly, he lacks the physical intensity and dominance that Heat Bron had. When you think of a dog mentality LeBron James, you think of Heat Bron, plain and simple. And at our number one spot, we have Miami Heat LeBron James. Like I said before, this LeBron shows more physical dominance and intensity than any other versions. This was prime LeBron James. On average, he was getting more awards per year than any other version, especially championships. This stage was LeBron's peak in defense, having that raw athleticism and physicality that few players have. This was when LeBron's career really started to take off and put him in all-time great conversations. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content similar to this.